Hello and welcome, you're here with me, Chaddy Tumblr. We're in a beautiful Royal Netherlands Air Force F-16 with four GB-12s, some sidewinders, well, some air defense anyway, a Titan pod and a field tank. Uh, I'm Wolf-1-1, one, one. next to me is Wolf-1-2. On he's unfortunately had to ground abort, so he's not be getting airborne. We are getting airborne from Gaziantep, Gaziantep here, and we've got to go and strike an ISIS compound down here. There is a Royal Air Force Reaper in the area. Can we see him? Yep, so he's there. Um, he's going to be giving us target information as we go in, and we need to knock out some of the buildings in here with some precision strikes. Let's get the aircraft started. Nothing unusual with the startup. The Reaper is only giving us target information. It's not giving us um, any laser designating, so I don't need to worry about um, laser codes or anything like that. We'll just get this thing started. RPMs above 20%. Engage the throttle. Great, this thing is thing. The F-16 is a little bit um, janky, and sometimes it won't start up even if you do everything perfectly right. Turn any lights on. Uh, we haven't got an Elim pod because the enemy air threat and ground threat is quite low, so we've just got our standard stuff. We have got a radio on though, and we did have a little message flash up at the very beginning of the mission that said we should check in on channel 6. Um, so actually we'll need to select channel 6 before we do anything like that. So let's just finish the thing this first. Right. I really need to get a macro that just flicks all these switches. And then flicks all these switches. Right, we can now do comms channel 6. So let's now check in. And we see Gaziantep's in white because it's got we've now got that slip frequency selected. So that's one, one. One. Request startup. Do the rest of our things. I've got a one one. Clear for startup. Wind one two three at two meters per second. I have a single fuel tank on the outside, so I've just got it on that one to give me a we can track that as we go along. He's given permission to start up, so that's great. Uh, we want Lick 16 on. I can put Master Arm and Laser Arm now, because I will forget if I don't. We need to wait for that to align, so that needs to go down to 10. So we've got a little bit of time, so I'm going to just align my headset. Or my helmet mount display, rather. And still, while I do that, it's a little bit out, so let's correct it. There we go, that's that one. And make sure the roll is in the right place. That's that. I'm going to stay point one, and it's 20,000 feet after departure. Um, stay point two is the target area, and what we're going to do is um, when the Reaper gives us the coordinates for the targets, we're going to overlay that onto square point two each time. So I'll show you how we change that. We've got flashing aligned now, so we're aligned. And pretty much good to go. I've bound to have forgotten something. That did seem very easy. Yeah, I'm sure people will be shouting at me. But that'll do. Right, let's get out of here. One, one. Request taxi to runway. Going anyway. One, one. Clear the taxi to runway one zero. I'm going to be dropping air to ground, so I'll go into that configuration. It's a little unusual coming from Gaziantep, it's a Turkish air base. Um, the F-16s, the Netherlands Air Force F-16s anyway, were based at Jordan for most of their uh, campaign in Syria and Iraq and did an awful lot of air refueling for their sorties. Um, this is a 45 minute to 50 minute sortie and I didn't want to make it a 2 or 3 hour uh, um, so hence the slightly unrealistic um, using this airbase. Now I found with air traffic, if you ask for departure clearance before you're on the runway, it just ignores you, which is delightful. So we're going to infringe. And I 
as we cross the line. Like so. So we're now in the active. Going to request takeoff. One, one. Request takeoff. There are some S-16s. Jedi... I can't remember the numbers. Jedi, I suppose, or Ranger, I suppose, we're coming back. Okay, take off and ready. Doesn't matter, then we'll find out. So it should be okay. And... Point it down the runway. This was the room off and punch it. Not particularly heavy, so I'm going to get rid of the afterburners now. And we'll just climb around to the waypoint. Like so. Five degree climb will be enough. So we'll put it at about five degrees. And we'll do attitude and autopilot. And that's it. We can just head off towards the target. Don't need to do any prep on the weapons. Nothing needs warming up. Don't need to change any laser codes just need to head out towards waypoint one when we get there um, we will get the reaper will contact us as call sign is lima alpha five nine and he will give us the target information that we need for the first strike just uh, speed up time a little bit okay so we've had a message wolf on one is everyone switching to channel one that's a reminder for me to change to channel one because that's the operational channel and the sentry. We can have a look at the planes. So there's me. Here's up on an afterburner. That was nice. We've got uh, this is Jedi. These are the uh, my fellow Netherlands Earth, uh, Dutch pilots. We just finished their mission. So it's those two. We've got my poor broken wingman. We've also got the Reaper. Lima Alpha Five Nine. And we've got Turkish Air Force, Charlie 130, who just got airborne at the very start of the mission. I'm not sure if we should show it there. And we've got some Americans, Rage 7-1 flight, two F-15s providing combat air control. But we are not expecting any air activity in this mission. And of course, Overlord is off by Cyprus, off on the coast there. Doing his thing. Back to me. I'm going to level off at about 20,000 feet. And we can speed up time. Very little to do at this point. This period is if you wanted to do any kind of checks, make sure your aircraft set up, that kind of thing. You just need a few minutes to get yourself ready. So we're at pretty much 20,000 feet. And level off with the autopilot. Just going to cut the fuel use. Actually, 95% power is alright. We're not using very much fuel. And we have got our fuel gauge here. So show I've got about 900 pounds still in the external tank because it's not um, like a, I know it's a war, but it's not a full war situation. I'm not going to jettison the pylons, and I'm going to try and keep the fuel tank as well, so that we can use it again afterwards. If anything does happen, obviously I will dump all of those extra bits and we'll uh, recover as normal. So we're about three minutes out from waypoint one. Going to speed up time. The speeding up time key. That's just um, the little high-pitched squeaking you hear there is Rage reporting on station and they'll just update it every now and again. We're about 30 seconds, 45 seconds out from waypoint 1, so I am just going to go into air to ground mode. Like so, I'm going to set myself up for CCRP. Don't need to change any of this stuff, that's all absolutely fine. I'm going to select the targeting pod and I'm going to put this onto the HSD, which is how I like to have it. Well, approaching waypoint 1. With 3.2, 3.1 kilometers. It's trying to give me targeting information. That's why we're getting weird countdown. So, this is, there will be actual voiceovers on the uh, published mission. But this is me checking in as fragged, which is a lie. I need to change that because we're minus one. We've lost Wolf 1 2. And then Lima F59 is saying standby. Now, if you notice, I'm turning because I've got my autopilot on. I've not set it to automatically go to the next waypoint, so this aircraft will now just do a lazy orbit around waypoint 1 until I try to do something else. So we're just waiting for the information from the Reaper drone. So here we go. 
he's saying message, we say go ahead, he's got a target for me, so there's rebels in a building at this grid reference, and it's southwest of a large tent, and I've got to use one GB12, and the mark point is on the F10 map. So let's have a quick look on the F10 map. We zoom in now, we have a mark point, so that's target one. And if you look up on the very top left of the screen, we've got the coordinates. If you don't see it in that format, you can use left, alt, and Y, and that changes it to different formats. But you want it to be that version. Um, we also have that information on the screen here, so what I'm doing is I'm going to transfer that across. So let's put it in now. So I'm going to go to state point two, and then go into Dobber Down. And I'm going to type in that grid. Now you've noticed I've already turned towards this new waypoint because wait, state point two is by default set in the middle of that compound um, by me, the mission designer. So we're going to go north 36 0 Enter. Okay, the mission, the message is gone, but there's no problem. If I bring up the knee pad, and go to the right. This, the full briefing, if you need it. And I've also got target information. So here's target one 36015895 and then it's go down. And then we are in east. Zero three nine one six three seven four. Enter. And the elevation was and that's not on there, so what we can do is we go to message history and I can see the message there is eight eight three feet. So let's come down. 883, enter. Okay, and what we're looking for is the second building down. There's a long row of buildings, there's a crossroads, it's the second one down uh, next to this street light. So let's see. So we'll make the targeting called soy. We can zoom in. We can zoom right in. Okay, we've got. So let's have a look. There's the main road. Can't really see what's going on at the moment because of the way that we're coming in. But once we find that crossroads, we can double check. What I like to do as well is if you look on here, this is the red where we're supposed to be looking at. The targeting computer is a little bit off. If you notice, it says here 3601579. We want to be looking at 3601589. It's slowly rendering in. This is the weird thing about DCS is that we are 20 miles away and there it looks like there's no buildings on here. If we're going to TV, we can kind of, there's the tent it talked about. Uh, we've got north is this way, and it told me it was to the south of the tent. So it's here. And that's based on the, the grid, the, the numbers that I typed in. If you notice, they're ever slightly out. So it says 583380. It's 589374. So we might have to tweak it slightly as we get closer. We are about 30 seconds out. These buildings still haven't started appearing. And what I need to hit, if you look at the, the, the knee pad information, is this weird L-shaped building. Well, I think you've got this sticky out bit here, there's the sticky out bit here and then there's this L-shaped building next to it so I think I need to be hitting this building next to it so I'm actually going to just move this here and I'm going to take control of the aircraft and line this up I can adjust the, uh, the target after we've launched the bomb so we're just going to wait for the countdown so the countdown is here saying how far we are from target but we can ignore the first um, flashing bit that we'll see. If you look at the weird DCSness, these buildings are inflating their way in, which is delightful. They could uh, quickly pump up those buildings. We'll double check when the bomb's in the air, we can make sure it's pointing on the right thing. So, this is the first countdown, this is a fake countdown in a way, this is for a different type of launch. Don't need to push anything yet. What I'm looking at is that little pipper at the top of the screen that's now coming down. I'm pressing and holding. And we're going to release the bomb in a few seconds. That's the bomb away, make sure it's left the pylon. So let's just adjust so we don't fly directly over the target. We can zoom out a little bit. So remember, that's the building we want. So let's just put that smack bang in the middle. And if you look at the numbers 589374, we're looking at 588376. That is pretty much the building that we need to hit. So just doing a lazy turn away. And bomb's going to be hitting in about 8 seconds. It's flashing to say the laser's on. 5 seconds, 4, 3, 2, 1. Boom. A good hit. So that's the Reaper telling me we've got a good hit. Looks 
absolutely we did it without any collateral damage that's perfect now let's wait for the next target and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the same steer point, steer point 2 so I'm going to go back and get ready for that aircraft is just flying on its own at the moment heading away and now I could trim um, but I'm going to drop a bomb in a few seconds so what's next so we've got further tasking the rebels have run into a nearby building that's 50 meters southeast of my original one it's a large square building with two cars so we'll look for that in a minute and then that's the grid reference so we'll pop that in so it's north three six zero one five seven five make sure that's gone in yep go down then it's east zero three nine one six three eight seven enter and the altitude is 82 well i've got 83 that's close enough for me and what i need to remember to do at this point is whilst the navigation computer has updated that straight away the targeting pod hasn't so if i hit cz that's now pointing at this new target so we are 13 miles away which is definitely definitely enough for a good run in so i'm going to manually just wake it around and we can see the waypoint in my helmet display it's quite far away and we can also see at the top of the screen there saying 50 40 30 20 10 and we can see the smoke on the ground down there where we hit the last building so let's get the aircraft kind of straight level altitude hold on to give me a hand normally I would trim this but I'm gonna I'm literally 28 seconds so we drop another bomb so it's not really worth it quick look on this let's zoom in okay so it's at a building with cars outside it doesn't look like we're pointing at the right one at the moment but that may be a uh, rendering issue quick look on the thing so this is target two so it's the building right next to the crossroads on the far side of the crossroads so let's have a quick look so we can see the crossroads to the right there and I think that is the building this one here is the building so let's keep this aircraft pointing where it's supposed to be this is the fake launch well this is for dive toss so that's that one done now if the cars don't render next to that building in a few seconds I'm going to have to change the target because I think I'm pointing at the wrong one and we'll release and pickle that's gone planes now balanced again okay that's the DCS-ness of it those cars have rendered in and if we look at our picture we're looking at a building with a satellite dish and two cars well that's the satellite dish and there's the two cars and we're on this side of the road that's good also the numbers 575387 well 574388 we're out by about a meter so we can just maybe put it there in the middle of that building and we just wait for this bomb to hit which it will do in eight seconds two seconds one boom Okay, it's getting quite smoky down there, it's going to be interesting. So it's a solid hit on that target. The Reaper's not finished with this yet though, we've still got more movement to sort out. Which is great, we can fly away and we'll get this targeting computer set up. Ready for the next thing. I mean I could even put North 3601, it's going to be somewhere in that region. So one. Here we go. So there's an ISIS manpad team has climbed onto the roof. So it's a large building to the southeast corner with park cars all around it. Okay. So it's 3601544. So we've already got 3601544. Come down. East 0391642. Enter. And the elevation is 880. So we may as well put that in. A few few won't matter. And it also said that there's another marker on the F10 map. And if you have a look, it's been adding new markers each time and taking the old ones away. We're hitting this building in the corner. And if I bring up the knee pad, change to that page, that's what we're looking for. This big kind of compound, there'll be some guys on the roof. Uh, and there's all these cars around it, so we'll know we're on the right target. We are 15 miles out, so let's get back in here. Uh, we're still 140 degrees off file heading 100 degrees that's that number at the very top of the HUD there 70 so we can just keep pulling 50 40 30 we can start slowing down the pull now there we go so 
about a minute out and let's have a look now what I forgot to do is realign the targeting pod so if you hit CZ that's now going to the new target information now it looks like we're hitting in amongst all the smoke here so this could be tricky so it's a target at the back in fact there we go if I go why hot can we see there's somebody on the roof there so this is definitely the right building so make sure my aircraft is pointing in the right direction and again I can tweak the bomb after we've launched it I know that that is roughly where I'm supposed to be hitting that's some thick smoke yeah there's definitely that's definitely got to be in the right place see the flat cars in the uh, there they kind of look like just weird things flat on the floor they will puff up to be cars shortly still got 10 seconds out there you go the cars are puffing up that's definitely something stood on the roof there and that is like a three-part compound that looks very similar to what we saw don't need to launch at this point this is for dive toss about 10 seconds till the proper launch. And we can see the little bar coming down now. Pressing and holding release. And it's going to come off there. Pink. Pickle. So let's fly away. Altitude hold. And let's come out a bit and just make sure we're going on the right thing. So there's lots of buildings around it. I mean, there's a guy. There's a guy there with some surface to air missiles. And we can check against that picture. It's, that is definitely the same building. Still about 10 seconds to launch. Actually, that's a little off, so let's put it on the building. Boom. There we go. SA-18 team's destroyed. That's only got an altitude of 12,000 feet. We're at 20,000, so if there was no way that was a threat. But he didn't need taken out. Oh, I'm on my uh, pneumatic altimeter here, so I'll just put it on a radar altimeter. So let's get the last target. We're a little lopsided, but not too bad. Okay, so the enemy commander is trying to escape in a BRDM2 vehicle, we, but we need to hit the main armory. So I can either engage the vehicle or hit the armory. The vehicle is heading southwest of out of the area at speed, and then we'll go for the armory. So I think we should go for the vehicle on this one, uh, and it'll give me a chance to show you how to hit moving vehicles. So it's a single vehicle, and he's down there somewhere. And what I'm going to do is, the further away you fly, the easier it is to spot this thing, which sounds very counterintuitive. But what we're going to do is, we'll reallocate that for now. So that's still going to the old waypoint, and I'm going to bring up the FCR, which is our ground scanning radar. I'm going to hit GM on the top left, then I'm going to hit GMT, which is ground moving target, and I'm going to come down to about 20 miles. And when it gets about 15 miles, I'm going to turn towards the target, and what you're going to see is you're going to see this white line that's going up and down is actually pointing at the previous target that I had. And what I'm going to look for is a very small, um, very obvious white square. So oh, he wants me to tell me what one he's killing. So hang on a second. So left turn. I'm going to go for the commander. So let's do that. Roger, he's going to stay over the compound. Nice. So let's hike it around to the previous target. If you look on, let me just do an altitude hold, and that, right, if you look just to the left here, there is a big white square, so that is a uh, a, a moving target, a moving ground target, so I'm going to make this soy, I'm going to select over it, and select it as a target, now if we go on to here, if I come out a bit, and go into infrared, there we go, we've got it hooked already so let me just zoom in and show you there now it's that oh, let's make this soy that is the vehicle there running around imagine how that would be to spot so what I'm going to aim ahead and put a square and now we've got it locked so from 12 miles away we've picked out that moving vehicle 
in seconds and we're now flying towards it and we do the normal thing we're going to fly at it and get ready to drop a bomb I'm going to keep an eye on this right hand screen because sometimes the, the lock will break if the vehicle goes behind a building or if it goes under a bridge or behind lots of trees we'll lose the lock and we may have to go out and come back in again but we should be able to drop in a few seconds so that's the dive toss lock on counter about 14 seconds to go So we've still got a good lock. Gonna try and keep it level, pressing and holding the release button. Yeah, pickle. Now what I need to do is take that off. And I'm gonna try and keep this locked. I'm not gonna zoom in and out, because weirdly with the F-16, if you kind of zoom in and out on this, you lose the lock. We're still about uh, 19 seconds to go, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna activate my laser now and that way my laser guided bomb should be pointing at that vehicle who is down below me who I'm targeting and it should be hitting in about 5 seconds <laughs> let's get back on here 3, 2, boom, there we go target's destroyed laser off Okay, we've got two friendly helicopters, so it was mentioned in the briefing that they are going to approach the compound. There's a typo I need to sort out in there. And that's it, there's no further tasking. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to head to waypoint 3. I'm going to put the autopilot on, altitude hop on, and off we go. Oh, those helicopters, we can have a look actually. Uh, here, these are just um, American Special Forces. Well, now that we've suppressed the compound, they're going to come in, they're going to land, gather whatever intelligence they can get, grab whatever insurgents they need to take away, do their thing. Not a factor for us. We can head home. Uh, waypoint 3 is 40 miles out from the airfield, and waypoint 5 is final. So we can have a look. So, how are we doing for fuel? With this, we're on our um, external center tank, and that's showing me that it's empty. I am going to keep the tank for now, um, and I will also keep these. Fuel. We've got 5,000 pounds of fuel, which is plenty. Because what we can do is, if I go to cruise, oh no, disregard. If I click cruise and then double right, and it tells me that when I get to waypoint 3, I've got 4,400 pounds left. I can actually just go to waypoint 5, which is home, and I'll have 3,500 pounds left at the moment, which is plenty. heading out, so we can speed up time. We're about a minute out from waypoint 3. Should really be at 20,000 feet to save fuel, but I've got plenty. Don't need that anymore. Make that the... Actually, FCR will do. Change that to GM. Get rid of that. HSD. Come out of air to ground mode. Okay, we've reached waypoint 3. Let's go to waypoint 4. That's another 60 miles out, so we'll speed up time. The autopilot's doing all this for me. Okay, Warfare 1 is off task, switching to Gaziantep approach on channel 6. That's my reminder. 6, enter. Let's speak to ATC. It's in white again because we know we've got the right frequency. One, one, inbound. inbound. approach instructions but we're going to kind of ignore that a bit. We'll speed up time. That's the account on there, 3 minutes, 2 minutes 50 till we get to this waypoint. And let's start losing the height. And that's actually Gaziantep down there. But this waypoint is set for about 10 miles finals. Or 10 miles final. So I'll just uh, send him when we're happy, I'll turn him bound. Back 
we can go straight to weapon 5 and we'll see that out of the helmet. again. One green. Two, three greens. Let's try landing. One, one. Request landing. I'm gonna land anyway. Steering on. Aircraft is under control. I think there's another exit halfway down the runway. Okay. But there, I see the exit board there on the right, the big yellow board. It's probably Echo, I think. And with this mission we get a bonus if we land if sorry if we park back where we started. So I'm just gonna do that now. Do this without one one taxi to parking area. Yep, gonna do that. Let's just have their head on the left. And just uh, we'll break the not taxiing above slightly faster than walking speed rule. There's Ninja, who uh, landed as we were getting airborne, pretty much. Let's hit the brakes before we kill ourselves. Uh oh! Uh oh! Uh, that's what I get for looking out the window. I'm going to have to turn around in a sec. Don't go across the grass. This thing is horrible at going across grass. So he's getting ready to depart. Looks 
looks like the engineers have given up on... Yep, they're not there anymore. Looks like he did he completely halted anyway. scores. So we only scored 29 because that's to do with how many ground things we killed but our mission results out of a possible score of 100 we scored 100. Um, if you decided to do this mission and you put extra bombs on you could potentially score 120 but the way that um, uh, DCS works is you can only ever score 100 for any kind of mission. So even if you did kill building 4 and destroyed the uh, commander's vehicle you would still come back with a score of 100. Um, and what we can see is the kills so we killed one, two, three, four, nine, ten, el ten infantry or ten ISIS uh, rebels, um, an SA-18 team, and the Rebel HQ in his BRDM2. So a good mission, and a nice introduction to uh, the Syria theory to our operations for the Royal Netherlands Air Force. So hopefully that playthrough was of some use uh, to show you the basic techniques for how to drop laser guided bombs and how to lock onto a moving target and destroy it very quickly from far away. If you have any comments or questions, put them down below and I will answer as soon as I can. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe, it really does help the channel. Until then, happy hunting, stay safe.